Hello and welcome back to the What The Folk Sunderland Review Podcast. Um, Sunderland lost 4-0 to Middlesbrough and we're going to talk about it. And when I say we, I mean us, as in uh, first and foremost, Ross Black. Ross, you okay? Hi, I'm all right. Yeah, I'm sure we'll get into it, but uh, weird one, wasn't it? I am like I'm all right. Like I'm totally fine with it. Like I think I said before the game to me, it it doesn't have the same bite to a derby. Like I like beating Middlesbrough, but I also like beating Leicester and Derby. <laughs> like I like winning games. And hey, look, it's a bit of a sore one because of the way it was lost. And I'm sure we're going to get further into it. But yeah, I'm I'm pretty much the same. I'm not too bad. Um, I'm also joined by Bradley Sharp. Brad. Um, Bit of a weird one, but how we do now, you all right? Yeah, as you can tell by my voice. <laughs> Apart from the football, I've got COVID as well, so <laughs> I'm not great. But uh, yeah, just a bit disappointed, really. But like, like we've said, it's just another game where we had the same last season against Stoke. It's one of them days. We'll just bounce back. Yeah, it just, it just happens. I think we will bounce back in... Uh, Ultimately, you don't want to lose any game 4-0, and certainly not in the manner we did in the second half. And the fact that the other teams seem to really dislike us doesn't really help. But I think ultimately, like, we've had much worse than that. We suffered much worse than that and bounced back from a lot worse than that and um, had a much worse team that's bounced back like that from results like that before. So got loads of confidence that that this team will as well. But um Look, Ross, it was a pretty crap day all around. Like, we, we can't deny it. Like, you can't lose games 4 0 at home and pretend it's all rosy and, and fine. But it wasn't without talking points, which means that, you know, we've got stuff to speak about. And yes, we're going to get into that red card. But, but, but before we get into that red card, it's about six or seven hours after full time. Um, are you over it? You feeling okay? Um, to be fair, I was over it. I think leaving the ground, like, I just, to me, like I, I was, I was, I was like, I was fuming with the referee. I still am now. He ruined a great game for me. I mm-hmm. thought his first half was a, t- a really good quality game with two sides who like uh, who've got some good technical players. Who like to play play around and pass the get through the thirds really quickly with pace. Um, you've mentioned it there. We've had it a lot worse. I feel. I, I don't know how I feel really. It's like a, it's it's like I am a I'm sick. I, the, obviously, Borough went and put four past for, or anyone's put four past for at home. We've lost four nil. I'm a bit disappointed in parts of the defending, but it all has mitigating factors. Like eleven v eleven, it's a total different game. And to me, I, I still I still think eleven v eleven will probably win that game based off what I see in the first half. Going down with ten men, it wasn't just the ten men. It was the position the player got sent off. Let's be honest, we had nobody else to play centre mid. We have nobody else with Echo out. Um, aye, it was it was an ideal, and I've went on a bit here, but long winded. I'm I'm still a bit cheesed off that we're gonna be four 0 at home, but like you see, that's, this is how to me it's not a derby because if the mags beat us four 0 at home. I wouldn't even be on this fucking podcast. I'd be like, "Fuck this shit." I, I mean, we uh, we wouldn't do one if it was if the other way around. But I think, um, look, I I asked a question during the week on the preview show, and and um, Dana, great guest, uh, she said it was a derby to her. Uh, I think I was quite clear that it wasn't. Just to kind of get that out of the way, that like, I'm not just sour grapes by saying it's not a derby. I worked for Middlesbrough Women. I would never work for the Mags. I worked for Borough and I was quite proud of it. Um, so I think that speaks volumes. But um, I just wanted to get that in there. Brad, it, it is, look, we sound sombre in that because we've been hammered for nil at home. I don't like getting beat for nil at home. But um, I don't know that this team feels different, doesn't it? It does feel like, you know, I know we've had, what, two defeats in the last four and one was an annoying one against Cardiff. And today is obviously a bit of a kick in the knackers. But, like, it does... It doesn't feel like the end of the world, does it? I don't know if it's just me. No, it doesn't, mate. And speaking about the derby, that's not a derby. That is a derby. You know, geographically for me, it's a bit like... It's a rivalry. It's not a derby from where I live. Um, so I've had my fair share of texts today and now their numbers have all been blocked. I've had quite a relaxed evening. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, I've seen enough from this team throughout this season to say, to know that we, we will have a, a, a bad result at some point and it's came now. But I've seen enough from them to say we can bounce straight back. Um, I think the international break has probably come at a good time now considering Dan Neal will have a one-game suspension. And I think Equa, I know he said he's had a dead leg. I, I, is his leg like completely dead where <laughs> it's not going to work ever again? Um, but yeah, I mean, some people say you don't want to go on the international break off the back of a defeat like that or off the back of any defeat. But I think for us, after we've had such a good run, then a, a defeat like that, but with the injuries we've got, which are a week or two away from coming back, like your Pritchard, Bradley Dak, Dennis Sergan, at least he's back on the back on the uh, on the training pitch now. We could look a lot stronger coming back after the break. Ross hit the nail on the head. If Eck was on the bench there, we can make a, a more of a tactical switch. And it might have been a little bit different. But I mean, we probably still wouldn't have won the game with ten men, but would he give us somewhere where we can just bring another midfielder on? I think it was all just a bit of a mess. Um, but yeah, this team's given me far more than enough confidence that we'll bounce back against Stoke um, when when we when the international breaks over. And yeah, it's just it's just one of them days, mate. I mean, I wasn't there today. I'm I'm working away, but I put half a day's in. Came home, watched it. it. Is what it is. I find it uh, I find it funny that we spent like I think it was me and Ross spent ages talking about how we needed like a defensive midfielder and then like I think it was like the last week or the week before when we actually you know what I think we might be okay I think you know we were maybe wrong we didn't need that defensive midfielder and then the day we were like ah right one of the ones went off the other one's injured ah right okay that's what happens when you've got no defensive midfielder but. Yeah, look, we'll, we'll get into the. There was negatives towards the performance, like we can't deny that. But we'll get into it. We'll get into the red card as well. But uh, I think I, I think it does show second half as well. I think Job tried to fill in there, and it shows that he's more of an an advanced midfielder. Um, I know it was a bit harsh on the lad because obviously we, we were chasing shadows for a lot of it. It does prove to me that he's more of an advanced midfielder and. It's just bad luck that Dan Neal's been sent off and our other really good defensive midfielder and player there, Equa, is out injured. Matete, if he was there, might have been another player that mm. could slot in. It's just just unfortunate. It happened it happened to a lot of clubs. It just seems to happen to us all the time where one position we get a shitload of injuries or suspensions at the same time. We're talking about um and we'll come on to it as well, but I just want to make the point before we go on to like a couple of points that I'm sure everyone wants us to speak about, but uh, Huggins got injured today as well, and like look, I'm, I'm going to ask you later on about Jens and Seelt and, and thoughts on that, but I think even if you thought he was good, bad, average or whatever, he's obviously not a right back, he's quite clearly a centre back, Um, I mean he's the stiffest man I've ever seen in my life, he looks like he needs a lot of DW40, but I think Seelt quite evidently is not a right back, and then you shift Humat onto the left, and you had that issue as well, which wasn't great. But look, we'll, we'll get further into that. Ross, one thing I want to sort of point out straight away, we're going to get into the red card, right? I know people want to talk about it and we will get into it, but it's going to sound like we're probably making excuses for losing 4-0 at home. And But you do have to give it a borough. I think they capitalised really, really well. We went down to 10, whatever the rights or, or the wrongs of it were. Um, they capitalised really well, kind of the way that Sunderland have been really. But, you know, not... The red not only sort of killed us, I think it killed the game as a whole. And I was actually really enjoying the first half. I felt it was a really even game. We've touched on it already. Two good teams, like, having a really good go at each other. But um, we'll talk about the red card in a minute. But how frustrating was it that, like, a good game was killed? More or less stone dead at half time. Aye, it was It was a totally different game, wasn't it? As soon as, as, soon as it happened, it was like, right, that's it. It's done now. And everyone at half time was saying as well, like eleven v eleven, it was close. So eleven v ten, we're, we're going to suffer here. That was the main thing would would suffer. It was a shame, like you say, we couldn't hold out more. And uh, I, it just it just killed everything, didn't it? It's like you could tell it was like a balloon had just been popped in the crowd as well. Like 
everyone at half time just knew they were furious with the referee for the decision and and also the decisions that he didn't make, which led up to that before and after. As you say, we'll get on to that, but it was just it was just annoying because I, I honestly think eleven v eleven that's anyone's game, you know what I mean? And it'll, it's a good game. But but that one that one extra player make a massive difference in the middle. And the tacticals Mowbray did try something new, he had to. And let's be honest, it went horrifically wrong. Second half. Uh I mean, yeah, look. First to uh, praise Mowbray, and I'm not certainly haven't lost confidence in him after that. But I didn't really understand taking Burst off, and then suddenly our players playing like long balls up top to Abdullah Bar. It wasn't really right for me, and it did. It it, it went really bad, and I, I just think it it was a second half was awful. Like as a performance that you kind of half seen it coming because the game was killed. But I actually really enjoyed the first half. Like. I thought I actually thought Borough edged it a little bit, like but not by much. Some people think Sunderland edged it, but it shows how good of a game it was. Like both teams had chances, both teams had the ball, both teams went for it. And I thought, you know, for a neutral, it was probably a really good game to watch that first half. And then the red card just knackered it. You know, Borough fans are not going to complain about that. They're not going to care about it, and neither would we. Like we wouldn't care less either. But I think it was a really good game, and it would have been nice to see where both sides were at with 11 men, if that made sense. But I'm sure Borough fans listening to this will say, no, we quite like the fact you went down to 10 men and then batted you. So, you know, it is what it is. But look, we'll, we'll get on to it. We'll kind of have to. And I'll, I'll come to you first, Brad. Um, the massive talking point today was that red card for, for Dan Neal. To obviously changed the game a lot. Um, I've made no secret of my thoughts on it, if you follow the Twitter page. But but what was your take on it, on it Brad? Um, without you having to edit this podcast at all and make your job easier, <laughs> that was fucking pathetic. I mean, Thunder League football, amateur football, semi pro football, National League football, Premier League football, they all shout, What the fuck? or Ref, that's a fucking foul. The, the F word comes in in pretty much. Any any football, a swear word comes in. It emotions are high. For him to shout twenty yards to a ref, that's a fucking foul. While Trey Hume shouting at the linesman, giving him everything, like much worse. Hume was going absolutely berserk. For him to shout ref, that's a fucking foul from twenty yards away. Then get a second yellow and a red is absolutely pathetic. If if that referee can't accept the fact that people are going to swear at him without him getting offended I mean I know it's 2023 and people do get offended quite easily but that is absolutely pathetic like oh my if, if people say football's a gentleman's game what you meant to do go referee um, do you mind thinking about that decision again no fuck off like that's pathetic and then 30 seconds later Dan Ballard gets an elbow at the face and gets a yellow card for it like, I can't get my head around it. Like, he is ultimately he, he, is he a Premier League referee as well? Yeah, he, he was brought. He was brought in from Australia. He's a Premier League referee. And what what gets me right? Look, I get that Dan Neal said, and I'm sorry for all the sweary words in here. That I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to not bleep it, but tell YouTube that there's some sweary words in it, right? In case it sends me off YouTube. But he said, "Ref, that's a fucking foul." Okay, that's not particularly asking him a question. It is contesting a decision in a game that you know. I suppose for the players, they'll have drummed into them by Mowbray that that derby, and it's for the fans. And obviously, Borough were putting the foot in, and any game's charged because both sides have got a chance of promotion this season. I think when you look at um, his response, the, the right thing to do. He's only yellow, right? Seconds from half time. Like seconds, it was 47th minute. I think he did it on three minutes or something like that. Good refereeing is you pull him to one side and you say, look, Dan, chill out. If you want to ask a question, don't make a statement. Like you can contest a decision. You can have an, you can have a chat with us. Don't gesticulate and throw your arms about and swear at us because you're on a yellow and I'm going to tell you I'm not accepting it the second time. Now chill out. Rome is at halftime. Just calm down. A referee's there to manage a game, 
not dictate what you can and can't say. And this kid, this Jared Gillett or whatever he's called, he's got form for it. He did it against Wolves last season. And it's like, you, you, I'm sorry, you just, I know, I know a lot of people go oh, the way that footballers speak to referees is terrible. And yeah, I know, like, look, bad language isn't great. And like, I get that it's not a great example for kids watching and stuff like that. But like, it's a game. It's a highly charged game that's got a lot of important like things like relying on it. He's kind of contested a decision in a slightly wrong way. He hasn't abused the ref. He hasn't run up to him and screamed in his face. He's just said that's that's a fucking foul, and the ref decided that's enough just to book him when he could have quite easily just gone, "Look, Dan, you're on a yellow. Chill out, son. Like just chill out. Manage the game like an old school referee would have done. Like I just." I kind of get my head around any other aspect other than he obviously would have, he wanted that game to be about himself and it annoys the bloody hell out of me. The lad who sits next to me, right? I hope he pops on Twitter and, and confirms this, but the lad who sits next to me, right? I said, he's absolutely gagging to send someone off here, him. And I went, I don't know what side it's going to be because I thought he was pretty crap for Borough. There was a couple of decisions that went against Borough and I was like, that's a foul. That's not a foul. Like, he, Clark, he got fouled twice and it, it, there weren't fouls. And they were given against um, Borough. And I went, he's gagging to send someone off here. And then I just knew he was going to do it to someone. And I was just praying it wasn't going to be us because I knew a red card was coming. And I just don't think you can manage a game like that. Like, And if you are going to manage a game like that, if that's now the rules, any swear was a yellow card, therefore you're going to get a hell of a lot of red cards because it's just not possible to do that, really. I mean... I just look. I've I've gone on a bit, but for me, it just the referees there to manage a game, not to dictate it. And he acted today like it, like he, di- he dictated it, and it's just the wrong. He just it's just not right. It's not right. There was a there was a one in the first half as well. Jack Clark got around the back of what's his name. Oh, the right back, and you got your shirt pulled the back right just back, because he right? continued running. Aye, he tried to rugby tackle him. Then we've kept possession, kept going. Ball stayed in play for about 45 seconds to a minute afterwards. And he hasn't gone back and spoke or, or give a yellow card. Lee Hendry was on Sky and he said, How has he not gone back and give a yellow card there? The mm. only way he can do it, only way he can think of was he's forgot. But then early in the second half, Greenwood's already on the yellow and he puts in a very similar challenge to what Dan Neal done in the first half. And we got a free kick and that's it. I mean, if if Yes, the referees are going to be shite, be consistently shite, have mm-hmm. a bit of consistency and put them down to 10 men as well. Mm-hmm. Because you can't just give us a yellow card for Dan Neal's first foul. And by the way, that was an orange card. That was borderline. Well, that was my next question because some Borough fans said it was karma because he should have been sent off. And I'm, I just want to make the point. Like, I'm not going to um, turn around and say, oh, it never was, it never was. I went, oh God, I'm a bit worried here. That might be having red. So you could say that all right, karma, because he should have been sent off. And I get that Borough fans and other fans, if it happened to it happened to other teams, would say the same. But it doesn't... Um, it's like, if we're saying that was a red card, it's double shite from the ref, because he's, he's sent him off for swearing at him and not sent him off for something which, to be honest, I think if Daniel had went for the, the tackle, I, I could have more understood it than the second one. Just because he should have went for an earlier one doesn't exonerate the bad refereeing. No, it doesn't negate it at all. But then there was the elbow on, on Dan Ballard, which the referee in, a, in his referee's inability to get control of the game has then caused Neil right, pretty much a fight. It was just pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. I, I want to know what Ross's opinion is on it because I'm going to keep swearing, mate, and this is hurting my throat. How, how many how many swearing words have we put in? We're going to have to be red cards all over the shop here. But um, also, by the way, an Aussie sending someone off for swearing. I don't like the generalize here, but I've never met an Aussie that doesn't swear like an absolute trooper. Um, but Ross, anyway, I, I've not asked you your opinion. I'm assuming you're going to be with us on this, but um, put it nicer than we did. Referees absolutely pathetic. Like I said, you're, you're man. A, I cannot be nicer because it's. It's 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 the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, Im- imagine like being a referee and someone saying, "Like that's a fucking foul ref," and you're like, "Oh, you can't speak to me like that." There's a yellow card. Even worse, knowing that he's already on a yellow, and you know what you're going to do with the game, 
And do you know what? Like you say, you mentioned it before. All of his decisions were shit. He mm. he, he he seemed to me like he wanted to be the star of the show. That's what it seemed to me like. It was a big game. It's on the telly. Big crowd. Good atmosphere. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna get my name in the in the. Uh, He's a Premier League ref. He's a Premier League ref. That's another thing as well, though. Why, when referees are shit in the Premier League, do we have to put up with them? Aye. The shit of the. They've got a technology there and they're still shit. They come here, they haven't even got the technology to try and help them pull out of it. And we're, we're stuck with the shit. I'd rather have a referee that's consistently in the championship that that, that doesn't have VAR. Because if you've, if you've got technology and you're still shit, then if you're going to get dropped down the league with no technology, imagine how shit you're going to be then. Because they can't even pull out your shit decisions. You know what scares me a little bit? Do you remember how we used to always complain about like rest in League One? And I know we did, I know we did, because we were like, oh God, they're so bad. Like, and they were, they were absolutely terrible. And then we're like, oh, like, I just want to get out of League One so the referees are better in the championship. And then like about three games in last season. And look, we're consistent with this. I can't remember what game it was, but we won the other week and we still had a segment on referees. And we try our best not to speak about referees. But <laughs> like, they've been bad even when we've won games. Like, that's what I want to say, Graham. Someone popped up on mine. I, I know the bloke, he's a mag, he's probably just trying to get a bite. But right. he said to me, I've never seen you have a go at a referee when you've won. But we do it week in, week out. We've we won do. recently and we've still mentioned how poor referees can be. When we got promoted, we, we still spoke about it weekly, how bad referees were. And we were saying we were maybe just scraping a win, but the refereeing performances are pathetic. What what it's, game was it that we we won and we still had a segment on how bad the ref was because the ref was terrible but we won the game was it Rotherham it was Rotherham, it was Rotherham. The it ref was, Rotherham. was terrible it was awful I went on BBC Newcastle after the game and first thing I said I wasn't buzzing about the thing it was about how bad the referee was and Gary Bennett was straight away agreeing with it it's but like I, say it's how, not any level it's it's the whole of the UK I think I think I was standard mm-hmm. officiating. Is probably one of the, the the reason you don't see any British referees now in Europe much. They like get the big games because they can't be trusted. I mean, did you see that? Did you see the argument today with Paul Merson and Mike Dean? And like, I'm not being funny. I always thought Mike Dean was quite a character, but the more that I watch him on Sky Sports, he comes across as really arrogant about the decisions. Like, I know better than you, and I feel like I said it today. Referees are killing the game, and look, there's more yeah. than decisions in on today's that one. game. On that one, did you see Merson's argument when Mike Dean said, but it's the law, and Merson said, what, what, what law are you on about? No one's going to die from it. It's not a law. <laughs> I was like, I, I loved it. But like you say on Sky, they're getting these ex-referees to come on, and they've picked two, which is Dermot Gallagher and and, and him. Probably two of the most controversial man- referees that the game's ever seen. And I'll tell you what I do like to see on Twitter, though, is Keith Hackett. Mm-hmm. He pulls referees to bits when they make a bad decision, and that's the type of man that we need in. Not, uh, it was it was it was in charge of them now. That Howard Man United fan, Howard Webb. Um, he comes on and tries to defend everything, even when they're wrong. Oh, we'll we release a little bit of VAR audio. I'm going off on a tangent now. We'll release a bit of VAR VAR audio, and I'll try and justify it. And, no, your referees are shite, mate. You sack them. You suspend them. You don't drop Premier League referees down to us because they've done something wrong in that game. There's still a heck of a lot of money involved in this in this league. There's thousands and thousands of fans spending good money in this division. League One, League Two, National League, National League North. I'll keep going down. They spend a lot of their hard-earned money to go and watch games being ruined by referees in this country. And it has to stop. Something has to change and it has to stop. Because these referees, like Paul Merson said, They've never played the game. They don't know that they either failed at grassroots level, and they they just want they they want to be involved as best they can. They've never played the game at a high level, and they don't understand the emotion, how how things work as a footballer when you when your brain's going at hundred miles an hour trying to do things. Yes, people are going to make mistakes, but these guys are utterly incompetent at doing their job that they're paid very good money for. And the ruining, the ruining the football. And I think we said it in League One. I'm slowly falling out of love with football because of the way referees handle the games. Like you say, they're trying to manage the games. They, they're not. They're there to manage the game, not 
be, the, the, oh, Graham, just stop me. No, it's just, like I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of something that'd be like, Brad, chill out, calm down, it's fine. But like, take today's away from. I mean, look here, no player is going to get sent off for the rest of the season for that, and that's just inconsistency. That like I remember countless refs over the past year don't even want to go into League One and it's just like it's got to a point where we speak about them so often and like Sky Sports was full of it last week because the VAR stuff quite clearly showed they haven't got a clue what they're doing and I know we don't have VAR and stuff like that so like it's kind of a pointless thing on a Sunderland podcast but like the week before that Although two weeks before that, we had Mike Dean talking about like bailing his mates out and all that live on TV. You know, this is what I would do, and all that. And literally saying that, like, in, in some ways that like, they didn't know what the hell they were doing. And they were just, but uh, we'll move on from it because I'm going to end up getting my head box me. Like, but um, there was things that were negative about Sunderland's performance, Ross. There was things that weren't good about it. Um, I don't want to exonerate Sunderland of a poor second half, we completely collapsed. You've got to respond better than that, no matter what happens and what the referee decisions go against you and, and what happens. And we're going to go down to 10 men in the future as well at some point. We're not going to go the rest of the season without getting another player sent off. Um, frustrating because the first half was pretty balanced. Second half was pretty awful. We didn't respond at all. What what do you put that down to? Um, I mentioned earlier, Mowbray did have to try and do something. He had to with our lack of centre midfield options. But... Um... I think putting Clark as the left wing back up against Isaiah Jones, who's known for being really good going forward, um, was a mistake, and it took our it took away our threat, which to me is on the wing going forward at pace on the counter. Defending was was poor. Um, I just think we lost discipline, which <laughs> you know I think we 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 kind of let the referee get in our heads and win the game. Like we we really didn't think like that we were like that's it, so so I it's annoying. Like you see, we haven't uh, we didn't cover ourselves in glory second half, but again the third goal is about fucking five yards offside. Like and now the referee's getting shit, but the fucking linesman as well. There was one time as well. It was right in front. Sorry, I'm gonna run again. Fuck this shit. I've had enough. <laughs> Here we but, go. <laughs> it was it was right in front of the linesman, right. Roberts had clearly kicked the ball out. It was so obvious. And he looked at the referee and he, he, he was practically shaking with the flag. Like, he didn't have a clue what to do. Like, it's right in front of you. Just give the throw in the borough. There like, was, I, I seen that. Because it, it was it's right where you sit there because you're on North Stand, aren't you? So I'm obviously... No, no I'm, I'm, up, I'm, up, I'm up and now I'm in the Premier Concourse. Oh, um, I, so you've got this... I know which one you mean. There was a point uh-huh. where... Because I went off it. I went off it and Ash was like, Graham, calm down. Because I was like, just make a decision. Like, he was, he didn't know which way to go. He kind of, and Roberts was looking at him like, what are you doing? And it took him five minutes to decide, uh, middle, no, Sunderland. And he gave it to us. I give it like, to us. And, and the, the Borough player had the ball ready to take the front because everybody knew it was a Borough throw. It was a Borough throw. I, well, again, but then again, first half, I thought they keep, I got a lot of protection from that linesman as well. He couldn't wait a flag for that. But Patterson got none. Well, none. I'll, 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 I'll tell you one thing because I watched it on the telly, right? The referees and officials, here we go again, got exactly what they wanted today because I've never seen the camera go to the officials as much throughout a game as it did today. They're now famous. The linesmen were on the on the telly all the time. It was, and every time there was a stoppage in play, it was always just going back onto Jared Gillis and they were talking about him and they got exactly what they wanted, being the centre of attention. Um, But, oh, man, uh, honestly... I, yeah. called, I called him Jared Gillett before. <laughs> um, I hope I hope Tony Mowbray stops wearing his gilet after after this because it's spelt very similar to his surname. You go boss one. Um, no, nah, yeah. look, but yeah, I mean, I, I will give one thing of credit, and it's not to the refs, not to us. I thought their goalkeeper was very good. Um, that. Stop from Roberts. Yes, he probably should have scored, but that was a hell of. He stuck his leg out unbelievably well. He parried things when he knew he, he couldn't catch it, and I, I thought their goalkeeper was very, very good today. Um, because if Roberts scores there, you don't know what happens where where we go from that. 
I think it does show you how even the game was, though. Like, if you go to um, some of like the Borough, uh, the Borough Breakdown podcast, obviously, you've done the preview um, with, with pals and stuff like that. And obviously, they're enjoying today. But if you look through who they said was man of the match, a lot of them are saying Senny Dieng because um, he kept them in it first half. Whilst that, I think it was quite even first half, he did make some really big saves. And I think that just shows you how at least even the game was and how good of a game it was, because I think Pato made some really good saves as well. Um, it was it was a really good game. So there are a few positives, I would say. I mean, it says, but it, it's bad. <laughs> it, it's like Thunder League when you say you get beat 4-0 and who are your standout performers and you say probably is the goalkeeper. And I think our two centre halves, I think Ballard and Onai in the form that was a good partnership. I still think they were very good today. Ballard was excellent, and they probably didn't deserve to be on the the end of a four nil defeat. That's what I will say in a positive manner. They they were mm. them three were very very good for me today. Yeah, I yeah, thought me Abdul, too. I thought Abdul Abar when it was eleven v eleven was was good. I thought he got into you know when we had the striker on the pitch. I thought he he brought with it well. Obviously, just had a shot where it went just over, but I thought he, he looked lively, you know, and obviously he basically got fed to the Wolves up top on his own, didn't he? When we were down to 10 men, it was like run for every ball and against... I must say, Borough looked very physically stronger than us, which worried mm. me a bit today. It's the first time I think we were physically bullied. So that's one thing we've got to maybe keep an eye on. Obviously, we've got players to come back. But the, the left pack issue needs to be resolved soon because we've now got no left backs and we've got three on the books which is quite impressive <laughs> even for Sunland standards <laughs> um yeah it's, I mean, it's injuries we've got we've got to bring them in them injuries we've got to get some back now haven't we I like don't want to there's I, a two week break mate and certain and Elise Elise is back on the grass that's a massive positive because he's a good player and a couple of weeks, uh, you never know, know. We might not need to rush Sirkin back if Elise is ready to come back in, and that might just start to negate some of them them issues. So, like I've said, I think this international break is actually coming. Win, win, lose, or draw today, it's coming at a good time because we are starting to the, the injuries are starting to rack up a little bit, and they're not long term injuries anymore. They seem to be the end of the long terms, or just little niggly ones where we can't afford to risk them. Dak, Equa, and. Pritchard, I think Pritchard was touch and go. Dak and Ek, Dak was touch and go for the Blackburn game two weeks ago, but he's just chose not to risk them, which is actually a positive because it shows we have got a little bit of depth and we've still been competitive in the last few weeks. So not having to rush them back where in previous time, previous seasons we've had to rush players back if they're half fit, just gives me a little bit more confidence that what we are doing is right and we have got a good squad of eighteen players that are capable of playing in a few different positions as well. Ross, yeah, it's probably quite a difficult one to listen 